Now, the first thing we're going to need to do is create a brand new project in Eclipse. You can use any IDE that you want, IntelliJ, VS Code. I'm not here to judge you. Just make sure you can create a simple Maven project. I'm going to fill in the GAV here, group ID, artifact, and version. Nothing special is going on here. I would like to apologize to all of the Java vampires out there who are complaining about this light mode here. I promise in the future I will do some dark mode tutorials. Now, setting things up, a couple of things I like to change here. Right off the bat, I don't know why, but the build path is always configured to have the compiler at that 1.8 version. That just makes me sick. I want to use the var keyword in here, which means I got to up things, date things a little bit. So I'm going to set that to version 21 of Java and then start moving on to the next steps here, which is going into this POM file and setting things up so that we can actually connect to our SQL Server database. I've gone to Maven here. I'm going to grab the driver for Microsoft SQL Server. You can see there's the Gradle coordinates. There's the Maven GAV. I'm using Maven. I'm going to use the GAV. I'm going to head over here. I'm going to have to add in the dependency now. I'm going to type in dependencies and then in there, I'm going to paste things in and it's going to be ugly. Maybe a control shift F will make that a little bit more handsome, but that now allows me to have a reference to the JDBC driver on my class path. Now, when I write my JDBC code, it's going to be able to connect to that SQL server. So long as I got the JDBC URL correct and to do that, I'm going to create a new class. I'll throw in the package com mcnc jdbc sql server tutorial. I'll call it sql server example. I'm not too creative. And I'm going to add that main method because we want this to be runnable. We want something where we can actually write some code and actually have that code run and do a, a set of CRUD operations against our sql server database. Now, one thing we do need we need that JDBC URL. So I'm going to create a static final variable it's static because it sticks to your clothes when you bring it out of the dryer with a JDBC URL. There's a couple of things you got to specify here. First, you got to specify that JDBC is the protocol. It's almost always JDBC. You got to specify your database type SQL server. You got to specify the URL and the port it's going to be listening on for us. It's 1433 on localhost. The name of the database to do, make sure encrypt is false. Otherwise you're going to be in a world of hurt. And as I said before, that SA user has to be enabled and we're going to use that user's password. Now my password is password. Promise me you won't tell anybody about that, but that's key. That JDBC URL is key to connecting to that to do database that we've got there in SQL Server. Now you notice there weren't any tables in there. What we're going to do is we're going to write some JDBC code that's actually going to execute a query, a create table query that is actually going to create a brand new table in that database. And if that works, we have just proven that JDBC connectivity is happening. So our create table SQL query will be create table task. Right? It's a to-do list and it'll have tasks in it. The ID is an int. It's not null and it's going to be the uh, primary key. And it's also going to have auto increment identity one one. It's also going to have a name. Every task has a name, right? Uh, task I got to... Uh, learn Java. I got to learn JDBC. I got to learn Spring. That's our SQL. Now what we want to do is we want to get a connection to that database. To get a connection to the database, we just declare a, a variable to hold that connection object. And we go to the driver manager and we say the driver manager, you know how to get that JDBC driver that's in that POM file. Why don't you take that JDBC URL connect to the database and give us a connection back. And that's exactly what it will do. Now, all of this SQL stuff does throw exceptions. So you can be cool and put it in a try catch block, or you can be lazy like me and just do throws exception in the main method. 
We'll tighten that up later, I promise you. But for now, that just makes life easier. Now, if we want to uh, actually execute this connection or this SQL statement against our database, we have to get a statement object. So the connection gives us a statement object. We then ask the statement object to execute. That sounds deadly, but it's actually functional. It executes this create table statement, and then we'll just print out, hey, table created. But we don't really care about the printout. We care about the table being printed. So let's run this, right click, run as a Java application. It says table created, but I'm from Missouri. I'm from the show me state. I want to see it. It's not there. It's not working. Nothing is, it, it's, it's broken. Nothing. Oh, I got to hit refresh. And when I do, there it is. DBO dot task. Everything worked. We were able to successfully get a JDBC URL connection to work with the driver manager and connect to that database. Now, I'm going to put this in a, a method of its own. So I'll do refactor extract method, give the method the name, hmm, maybe initialize table. That extracts all that content into a, a separate method. I'm going to comment that out. We don't want to create the table every single time we run this. Um, that's all good. I'm happy with that. What are we going to do next? Well, I guess the next thing that we've got to do is the create operation because that's what comes next when we're doing CRUD. 